I was really hope, I really hope that you were about to flame Henry and just be like, man, how must it feel to have a Super Bowl Fifty champion flame you live on it? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I will never know. Because maybe your hero wasn't here. Exactly. That's so what it was, was like. Was calm, peace, mm-hmm. yeah, just hang out. Wait. Oh, not like your hero is unpeaceful, but when your hero is together, it's Wait. Give me a minute. Mike, stop working. So, Todd, here's going to give you another opportunity to just absolutely flame uh, Henry. Do you want to do that? No, I'm not going to take it. <laughs> You're here. <laughs> he did a good job. What? Oh, come on. Am I Who wasn't my there? Definitely wasn't me. I mean, even people in the comments section. Multiple people oh, in the comments. Wow, mu- many them. multiple people in the comments section are getting after you here right now. Oh, uh, Wait, are so we the, better? Are people we all are muted? still saying muted. Okay, he says we're good. He says muted. So yeah, welcome so in to the DMVR Broncos podcast where ah. I thought we were here, but now we truly are here. Yeah, what were you saying? You're back. We're back. Yaya's back. Baldy's going to be back. Baldy's going to be back at 1130. Yep. That was and it. now everybody's all caught up. Yeah, Everyone's back. We're all caught up. We're ready to rock and roll. And the Broncos are rocking and rolling in, uh, why can't I think, where LSU is. Where is LSU? Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I, easy to, to forget when you just think of like good college towns in the south. You think of Tuscaloosa and then kind I couldn't of everything tell you else. one thing about any college town down there. I would imagine they all love football. I'd be willing to bet on that. And probably pretty good food, too. And uh, when you go there, when you become a coach down there, you just get a little southern accent, nice little oh, southern God. accent like Brian, Brian Kelly. Kelly yeah. <laughs> wow, you're pretty good at that, Zach. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I was in uh, Texas for the very first time this past weekend. Oh, really? Um, so, so I got my Texas twang on, and then I went to Florida, and uh, <laughs> I didn't really try any accents down there. Yeah. Um, is there a, is there a Flo- Floridian accent? Yeah. There is one. <laughs> Help me out. I What's don't it know if it's more like, like the yeah. Florida. It's, yeah. Not as, <laughs> it's not as cool as the Texas draw. Yeah, yeah. I feel like some of Florida's like word choice too. Mm. Lots of small words and lots of small words. Yeah. Also, I've never been to Texas either. What are you saying about Texas people? They can only handle small words. <laughs> no, I was talking about Florida people. Florida. Texas oh, people Florida are great. People can only handle <laughs> Texas people what are, are you awesome. saying about Florida people? They can only handle small words. They can. Texas people can definitely say long words because they take so long to say them. Like they can just sound out every syllable, you know, like that. <laughs> that was almost an accent. That wasn't supposed to be an accent. That was supposed to be talking slow. But yeah, yeah, no. Fayetteville, huh? There's another town. Yeah, and so Baton Rouge is the one that I couldn't remember. And that's where the Broncos are right now. Broncos contingent down there for Jaden Daniels Pro Day. Or maybe it's Malik Neighbors Pro Day. Who knows who they're seeing, but a lot of talent down there at LSU. And it actually is pretty clear that they are down there to see Jaden Daniels because the Broncos are going to have an individual meeting with Jaden Daniels after his pro day today. It's not going to be like the J.J. McCarthy one where they go through an entire separate workout with J.J. It's just purely going to be to meet with him, to put him on the board, to see what he's got mentally. Is this big news or is this a smokescreen? I think it's just news. I think it's covering all your bases, just mm-hmm. just in case there's some mm-hmm. way this guy falls. Oh, 
uh, you know, out of the top three, we've done our research. We've kind of seen him in yeah. person. We've seen him on the board. And if he's there, then we can take the shot knowing that we've done some research. Exactly. You just, I mean, the Broncos need a quarterback. Not sure if everybody's heard that. But you can't be sitting there on draft day in a world where Caleb Williams goes one, maybe J.J. McCarthy goes two, Drake Mays three, and everything's kind of chaos at the top. And all of a sudden you're sitting there at like the sixth, seventh pick and Jaden Daniels is still on the board. Like if you're George Payton, you can't just be like, hey, Sean, should we go get this guy? And Sean just says like, I don't know. I've never met him. Like, you can't do that. Like, you, you just have to, all these top quarterbacks, you have to meet with them. I think the bigger news would have been if they don't meet with him. And if, I guess if they hadn't today, they probably would have at some point in the future. But, yeah, it's it's just something that when you need a quarterback, you have to do. Like, there's just no way around it. And the Broncos did this at the Combine. They met with every mm -hmm. single top quarterback, and really every single quarterback, I believe, that was there. They met with, they're going to spend their individual meetings with quarterbacks as they absolutely should, covering their basis. But I think that this is actually uh, huge news because I do think that this is not a smokescreen. I don't think it's, this is them just doing their due diligence. I think this is someone who Sean Payton really likes and does Sean fall in love because we know we heard it from George and Sean Payton earlier this week if everyone the way that George Payton put it was if everyone has a consensus falling in love with the guy then you do whatever you need to to go get him Sean said if I fall in love with the guy we'll do everything we need to to go and get him and Jaden Daniels has like everything that Sean Payton has ever mentioned as a trait Jaden Daniels has from uh, the most important things in Sean's mind of decision making, being able to process everything we've seen about Jaden Daniels these past couple of years at LSU. He has proven that he has that accuracy. And then something that Sean started to throw out there uh, as as of this week was the ability to make plays mm -hmm. when the pocket breaks down and do things with your feet. Bad news for your guy, Michael Penix Jr., but it's not a must for Sean Payton. Obviously, Drew Brees wasn't like that either, but Sean is now starting to see like, man, if I could have a little extra something on top of it too, and no one in this draft, no one in drafts since Lamar Jackson mm -hmm. has had that extra bit than Jaden Daniels does. So I absolutely think that uh, this, is, this is big, uh, but you mentioned something, Todd. You said if he falls out of the top three, mm -hmm. That's what it feels like the conversation is with Jaden Daniels. Who, is he, how high is he going to go? I think he could go all the, all, all the, all the way uh, high, all the way up. Uh -huh. Yes, all thank, the way you, high. thank you. All the way high? Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, here's doing something behind the camera that just makes me think of high, high right now. here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I really wish. <laughs> I drank way too many Red Bulls this morning. I'll say that. Much. I need oh, something to calm no. down. <laughs> there we go. Um, I think Jaden Dan's going to go all the way up as number two. Mm -hmm. So uh, if he's going number two, the commanders aren't going to trade the number two pick if they identify him as their guy. Yeah. If the Patriots at number three identify him or someone else as their guy, they're not going to trade. If you find that quarterback, you're not trading really anything. So if he falls out of the top three, then it's like, okay, we love him. Mm -hmm. Just how much are we willing to give up? And what Sean and George have kind of said is anything. You do whatever you can to get him if he or someone you fall in love with falls to where you can get him. Yeah, I think it sounds great. I think that's a great plan. I just don't know if we have enough to give up to even get up to four. Like, that's going to take a lot. And um, it's going to take a lot. And so I just don't feel like four is realistic. It can be done. It can be it done. Can be it's going to set the team back even further a couple more years. We'll have a good quarterback, hopefully, yeah. and then or maybe not, not much else. But, um, yeah, I think this was more covering their basis. But if he is there... Maybe you pull the trigger. Maybe you can make something happen. Maybe some Walmart stock or something. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it would be fun. If they decide to do something crazy and go get Jaden Daniels, it would definitely be fun. It pro probably wouldn't be worth it. Um, I think in an alternate universe where the Broncos didn't do the whole Russell Wilson thing and trade away all those picks, I would be saying right now, like, yeah, they're probably going to do something crazy make and go jump. get a quarterback. But having just done that, you have to have learned your lesson. Like I, I would imagine that if you're the, that ownership group, you're like, wait, we're, we're trading away three first round picks to go get a quarterback. 
No, that is the one thing we know not to do in this job. This is the one thing we've done that just straight up has not worked. So that's why I'm a little bit hesitant to say that they would do that. It doesn't mean they won't, but that's why I'm not sitting here saying like they are absolutely doing something stupid to go get a quarterback. I mean, who knows? I mean, uh, Evil Knievel never stopped after a crash. <laughs> that is true. Sometimes you just he didn't keep die going either, for it. Either, yeah? You know true. what I'm saying? You just keep going for it and Work see what happens. Him. And Evil Knievel beat Montana. Wait, what, what do, do you, you mean? mean? He's from Butte, Montana. Oh, he's from Butte, oh, Montana. I thought you said Butte, Montana. One of us. That's what I thought. No, 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 no
Somebody has to win it. Is like, that tomorrow or Friday? Tomorrow. That is what I didn't realize until this morning that the season actually starts tomorrow. Yeah. Because everything's just about opening day in Colorado. Exactly. Like, that's where all the hype is. Yeah. And then the Rangers, I think, are still in first place in the NHL. They're here tomorrow night playing the Avs. Mm -hmm. So there's like a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Oh. Plus uh, money on the Avs for that? I, I doubt it, but there's a yeah. chance. Um, and then also Colorado plays Iowa in the Sweet 16 for the second time. Back-to-back uh, -back years. Yeah. They're 3-1. to one. You can get 3-1 to one odds on them. There's a whole bunch of sports going on. You can make money with Bet365. Uh, if you bet $5 or more, you can get $150 in bonus bets. Or you can take a first bet safety net offer by placing a bet of up to $1,000. If that qualifying bet loses, you get a matched refund in bonus bets. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. Uh, must be 21 or older physically physically located in Colorado please gamble responsibly if you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help call or text 1-800-GAMBLER alright so Matt Miller dropped a 7 round mock draft is yeah. that right Todd did you see what the Broncos do in this draft in this mock draft was it Jareverse again no. It was not. So he I has texted you. He hasn't seen it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. If he read you. No, no, don't oh, look at it. Don't look at it. No, no, no. I, 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 I want to see you. Um, so the Broncos make a big trade. Right? They do Henry. make a big trade. Well, don't tell me that. Don't tell us the terms. Okay. But what do they do? They go from where to where? 12 to 4. Oh, to draft. Dang. To Quattro. Uh, to draft Jaden Daniels. To draft Jaden Daniels. No, wait. JJ McCarthy. I swear this said Jaden Daniels before. Wow, he texted the wrong oh, thing. Boy. So even the information that he would have given you would have been wrong. This so is actually, that was you were McCarthy. the smart one to not no, read his text. Am I on the right page? Yeah, yeah Matt Miller. But do they make I the just trade from up. 12 to 4? Uh, yeah, 12 to 4. J.J. McCarthy, though, not Jaden Daniels. Okay, so read me the first three picks in the draft that he has. Caleb Williams. Okay, obvious. Jaden Daniels, Drake May. Drake, Drake May, May going okay. three. Okay, so what would you guess? Those three guys are off the board. The Broncos clearly fall in love with J.J. McCarthy. What do you think they trade to go from 12 to 4? Uh, first rounder this year, so 12. Uh, first round next year. So one. First round the year after that. Plus maybe a second round, 2025. That's Didn't need the second. Guess. Oh, dang. It was okay. just the three first round picks. I mean, not. I mean, just makes it sound like it's not much. That's a lot to give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is a ton to give up. What could go wrong? Is that a smart move? No, 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 no. <laughs> smart, no. It would be very, very fun. It would be a lot of fun for that to happen. Uh, it'd make our draft party a lot more fun. Stay tuned for the details on that. Mm. Um, but no, is that smart? Of course not. We just lived through this. Like they just traded all those picks to go get Russell Wilson, a guy who'd won a Super Bowl. Obviously, that didn't work out. Trading all this stuff, I, I know it doesn't never work, but it feels like it just doesn't work. But like, it, it feels like you're cheating the system. But at the exact same time, like, Paxton Lynch didn't work mm -hmm. with True. the Broncos. He was a first-round pick. He was tall. He had a strong he arm. He was tall. Uh, he was fast, had every physical tool you could imagine. And that not working out to the catastrophic extent that it didn't, I think scared John Elway so far away from ever drafting a guy like that. And I think was a big reason why they did not take Josh Allen in the draft. Instead, they went with um, a much safer pick, still a very good player with Bradley Chubb at five. But I think John said, ah, I didn't work with Paxton. I can't risk it again here. You can't live that way. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see like the exact same red flags with the person, then you say, yeah, okay, like this guy's not going to study as, as much as a quarterback is needed to. Then, of course, you put those dots together. But just because one guy in a similar situation doesn't work out doesn't mean another guy uh, in a similar situation isn't going to work out either. That can't scare you away. No, not forever. At some point, you got to pull the trigger again. But for this specific trade, I don't do it because it costs too much. And as we've seen, like once you lose those first and second rounders, picks, is, picks they're gone. Like – can't take them back. You can't take them back and you can't yeah. get them back. Especially you think in free agency, we might be able to trade our best players, maybe get a second round. Th We've learned through this year, you can have quality players, former first round draft picks, put them on open market. You're not getting anywhere near that first, second round again. Yeah. So once you trade them away, they're gone. So I think that's too much to give up. That's three potential players or two more potential players that we could have that are first rounders that we won't be able to have on our roster. Yeah. And 
I mean, you go through the quarterbacks who teams have traded up for. I think I got banned from the chat again. Uh, uh, three, you get uh, it. It costs three firsts and a third for the 49ers to get from 12 to three to get Trey Lance. Um, that was the most recent. In 2018, there was a big deal for the the Jets to trade up with the Colts to get Sam Darnold. Uh, the Bears gave up. Uh, I guess that's a first, two seconds, and a third, I believe, to get up uh, for Mitchell Trubisky. Um, before that, it was Jared Goff. Before that, it was Carson Wentz. Before that, it was RG3. Um, before that, was Eli Manning, which worked, but that was when Eli said he wasn't going to play there anyway. Um, trade up for Michael Vick. That one worked, but we're talking about more than 20 years ago now. So when you look so at the... It rarely the, works. It has almost never worked. Like, it depends on what you want to call Jared Goff. I would say... You traded him away, so obviously that one, to, in my mind, did not work either. Guys, we've got some uh, breaking Broncos news oh, no. right now. I was just able to confirm that the Broncos are... Wait, why did you guys say, oh, no? Because I don't, <laughs> I don't think... Because you never know how this is going to go. The Broncos oh. are signing wide receiver Josh Reynolds to a two-year deal up to $14 million, a max value of $14 million. The Broncos now have their second highest paid wide receiver on the team. Still not over that 10 mark. It's still not over the 10 mark. So they're still, yeah. they're and still like trending the underneath the exact it. same price per year as Brandon Jones. Yep. Yeah. So he's, Josh is now like the highest paid Broncos free agent signing this year. And the crazy thing is, so when Jerry Judy leaves, everybody was like, oh, the drops, the drops, the drops. So you bring in the guy who made the two, was it two or three massive drops in the NFC Championship game, like right uh -huh. across the middle? Um, no, I, th I think he's a good player, but that, I mean, obviously, when you think Josh Reynolds, the first thing that comes to mind is... Drops. Oh, shit, he just lost the Lions in the NFC Championship game. Now, I mean, if he loses the Broncos a championship game, they obviously took a big step in the right direction, but... <laughs> that's very I don't, true. I don't love that that's uh, the, fir the first thing that comes to mind. Dang. That's yeah. Tough. Um, so what? He's. I always think of him as a slot guy. He's listed six three, which. Uh, it's big. It's big which is receiver. big. Is a big slot guy, and maybe he plays more outside than I remember. But uh, for all that stuff across the middle, that that should be like his wheelhouse. Like that's what he's there for. Um, again, I can't forget those drops they had in the NFC Championship game right across <laughs> yeah, the middle. But he was can't. wide open. He was wide open. Um, he would have been what their number two receiver. I mean, Laporta tight end. You put him Saint in front Brown. of him, but yeah, St. Brown would have been the number one Reynolds, uh, short possession guy. Um, I, I almost, I've almost said the Broncos should get him so many times. Like I did that mock what off is season. He talking about it was he like, it was to say it once. but no, he, he just said all he could think about was the drops. And now yeah. he's saying he was pushing for the Broncos. <laughs> to get no, I was not pushing for him. And the drops were kind of why, um, but it's needed. Wait, so were we you pushing to, for him or no? No, but I do see, I mean, <laughs> well, what did he say? 30 seconds. Well, said, I, but, almost, I was almost saying I was no, okay, him. I was not pushing. I see why you would want a guy like that because, you know, we talked about like Tyler Boyd, for example, one of those, those slots type receivers is kind of like the one piece that's missing josh reynolds probably the best one left on the market almost definitely um as he says about the drops shit happens man <laughs> didn't want to drop them shit happens yeah i think it feels a need for the broncos they definitely needed a wide receiver we talked about it yesterday on the show uh the top five needs for the denver broncos and one of them was wide receiver we thought that they could maybe fill it in the draft but i think having a little bit more of a veteran player coming in to help whoever this rookie quarterback is is probably a better move. So it's necessary. So I'm glad they made a move in that room. Yeah. And like we said, like my bad, like we said, like I think that TP and Marvin Mims and Cortland Sutton is a good starting three, but I think just with new guys coming in, in the, to new roles, expanded roles, guys coming back from injury, I think you need one more to kind of shore up that group. To me, this makes me question – if Cortland Sutton's future is with the Broncos here, um, because right now the Broncos have like four guys with Josh Reynolds that should absolutely be on the field often in, in a game. They're not going to be able to do that with these four guys. Now, maybe this is um, a big, not maybe this shows that that Tim Patrick, they're really worried about his injuries with back-to-back season-ending injuries, not playing a snap of football and like, 
over 700 days actually on a game field. And that's totally fair. Mm -hmm. But this either shows me that they're not that confident in Tim Patrick being able to be that guy, understandably so, again, after not playing football in in 700 days, or that they want to move on or see an opportunity where they could move on from Cortland Sutton. Because when I look at this wide receiver room, Josh Reynolds making up to $7 million a year, he's going to be on your football team. He's going to have a big role. Marvin Mims going to have a big role as well. So those are two guys that are like staples. And then it's kind of between Tim and Cortland. Maybe with Tim taking a big pay cut to be on the team this year, they're okay having him as their fourth wide receiver. But I think this gives the Broncos a lot of flexibility in terms of potentially, if they get the right deal, being willing to move on from Cortland Sutton here. And then in the end, you would save money by signing um, by signing Josh Reynolds and moving on from Cortland Sutton. Man, that's tough. I didn't see it that way. I guess mm-hmm. I didn't want to see it that way. I was hoping that it was more of a buffer for TP coming back. And then also Marvin Mims. I think people don't understand how tough it is to be a returner and then start, mm-hmm. you know, as a wide receiver. It's, it takes a lot of energy running back kicks then to line up and try to go 10 plays. Right after that, you're going to be winded. So not a lot of receivers, starting receivers, are the starting kicker, punt returner for that reason. So I thought it was a good buffer to have yeah. Marvin Mims take a few plays off or if he wants to start, him and Tim P- TP mm-hmm. can kind of switch off if they're going to have TP play more slot. But if this is like bad news for Cortland, I don't love the signing, you know what yeah. I'm saying, just for what Cortland has done. Um, but we'll, guys, we'll have to see. Uh, if they get rid of Cortland, they can't have a rookie quarterback. Like, you just can't do that. Like, this group would not be good enough. Like, if you're if you're going through the season saying, you know, go try to win some games, but also we're drafting a quarterback next year, sure. Like, you can throw Stidham out there with Josh Reynolds, Tim Patrick, and Marvin Mims, and just whatever happens, happens. But, you, I mean, Josh Reynolds has made some plays – has two 600-yard seasons in his career. It's an eight-year career. Uh, 608 last year. Five touchdowns. Best mark of his career. Like, not a bad player by any means, but, I mean, he hasn't caught 50 catches in any of... or Yeah, caught 50 balls in any of the last four years. Like, you have that. You've got Tim Patrick, who, at his peak, is more productive than Josh Reynolds, but it's been a couple of years, obviously. Marvin Mims has to kind of show that he's worthy of playing time. Um, and so... Even if you're really high on Marvin Mims, even if you're high on Tim Patrick and expect a career year from him, even if you expect a career year from Josh Reynolds, you're still not looking at a group that's, I mean, top 20 in the NFL probably. And if you put a rookie quarterback in that situation, it's just not going to work. This, to me, this is a good contract for Josh Reynolds. Like Mm -hmm. you said, Henry, um, last year coming off his best arguably his best season 40 catches 608 yards started 13 games played in all 17 five touchdowns seven million dollars that's a pretty solid contract um clearly the broncos have seven up up to seven yep clearly the broncos have a vision for him and i just think one of the things we talked about on the show is you want to have some flexibility you don't want to have to feel like you're pressured to do certain things going into a draft now i think this gives them flexibility with not Definitely not needing to draft a wide receiver now, but also yeah. the flexibility of if someone comes with a good enough offer for Cortland Sutton making a move there. I just don't see them making a move with Tim Patrick, with Marvin Mims, um, with Brandon Johnson. I, I think that that's the guy that could now be moved from here, mm-hmm. but it's not like they now need to force him out because they just gave a wide receiver $20 million now have to save money. Um, but mm-hmm. I think this gives them the flexibility, which is key. Uh, really quick. Give this give this an initial grade. This signing a grade. Um, I would say B. Yeah, I think he's a solid player. I think he's an offensive weapon, which we need. Um, so I'm gonna give it a B and see how it shakes out. Yeah, yeah, I'll give it a B. I'll go, I think so. Yeah, I'll, B's good. I'll go B minus. I think it's really close. It's just a it's a decent amount of uh, change to to pay him. <laughs> um, so there we go. Broncos add a weapon on offense. And if you want to add some money to your pocket, check out our friends over at Circle K and with the Inner Circle app, it's going to save you twenty five cents per gallon off your first five. 
Phillips. It's also going to get you your first five Polar Pops for free. And then every sixth item is going to be free, such as pizza roller grill, dispensed beverage, donuts, and more. And if you want a free Polar Pop right now, you don't even have to purchase anything, text DNVR to 31310. That's DNVR to 31310. And this isn't just for Colorado. It's across the country um, as well. So make sure to download the Inner Circle app with Circle K to get in on this. Go to circlek.com slash inner dash circle. And shout out to our friends over at Empire today. Uh, they'll definitely keep you well taken care of with new floors, whatever you need. They got you covered. And, you know, I do a little bit of developing and flipping on the side. And I can mm-hmm. tell you that new floors really change a home um, e- the easiest. It's even good to more know. than paint, even more than tiles. Mm. If you new, get new floors in a home, you'll definitely see a difference. What's your floor recommendation? What's the best floor? Uh, okay. El- Empire today. <laughs> yeah, Empire today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, like a laminate vinyl tile, something that is like durable, waterproof, doesn't have to be super expensive, but it's pretty good. Okay. I'll yeah. keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's my next floor. Uh, and then uh, if you have, if you check out their virtual floor designer, uh, you can see the flooring in your home before you purchase it. So you can know exactly how it's going to look with your walls, with your cabinets, with your new paint. Go check them out. You can schedule a free in-home estimate today. Uh, all listeners can receive a $350 off discount when they use the promo code DMVR. Restrictions apply. See EmpireDetay.com forward slash DMVR for details. All right. Let's go out to our hotline and bring on our guy, Brian Baldinger. Baldy, so happy to talk to you again. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, guys. I missed you. You know, it's good to be back with you and see, uh, see my happy group right here and join you and get back to talking some real football here. Absolutely, and I mean, there's no better person to have on to break down the Broncos' new signing uh, than you. Broncos just agreed to terms with wide receiver Josh Reynolds, of course, formerly a Lions uh, wide receiver. What are the Broncos getting with Josh Reynolds? Well, hopefully uh, he won't do what he did in that uh, playoff (laughs) loss. Yeah. Uh, He had some key drops. But Josh Reynolds, been. I mean, look, you go back to his days with the Rams. um, He's a big receiver that uh, I, I think more of a possession guy than a guy that's just going to take it to the house. But, I mean, a guy that has a lot of experience in this league has worked with a number of, you know, really good quarterbacks, you know, Jack, whether it's Jared Goff, that he was with him with the Rams, with him in Detroit right here. He's worked a lot of good uh, coordinators. Most recently, Ben Johnson. Uh, they really liked him in Detroit a great deal. But, you know, they've got some young guys that they just need. You know, they're, they're, they're stealing reps from some of these Jamison Williams, some of these type of players, Amon Ross St. Brown. So, you know, he's available. So, look, after you trade Jerry Judy away, I mean, there's a need for receivers, period. Um, and you have limited draft picks. You better go find a guy that has some experience right now. You know, it's pretty obvious that the Broncos are going to go with the quarterback uh, first round of the draft. They need one. How do you feel about the supporting cast uh, via the wide receivers, tight ends, running backs? Do you feel like it's a good group for a young quarterback to come in and win with? Well, I think, you know, Javante will be two years removed from that injury. Jaleel, like I think they got some backs. Um, you know, the center position is still a, a position of need, I believe, after losing Cushenberry. But the offensive line should be pretty good. Um, you know, I think it's okay. I don't think it's elite at this point or anything like that. When you look around at what Kansas City has, um, what the Raiders have, um, what the Chargers maybe might have, I don't think it's it, it's what you would want to go win a division. But I think I think that it's serviceable at this point. Cortland, you know, the tight end Trotman, the tight ends, the backs. I think it's okay. The Broncos are meeting with Jaden Daniels today when he's done with his pro day. Is that something that we should get excited about hearing, or is that just them doing their due diligence? Do people know that he won the Heisman? Do they even know? <laughs> that <he won> the <laughs> it's really bad. Like I, I feel like people mention Jaden Daniels and like oh, LSU. Like they don't, they forget the type of year that this kid just had. Yeah. Like he was sensational. Um, I don't know. You know, it's hard to believe that he would ever be there at twelve. Like, I think the Broncos got to be super aggressive in order to go get Jaden Daniels, if, if, if that's a guy that they covet. Um, he's got a unique skill set. I mean, he is an elite runner. He's kind of a narrow frame guy. But, you know, Malik Neighbors did lead uh, LSU in a, 
in a university that has a lot of great, in a history of great receivers, he's the all-time leading receiver. Well, he wouldn't have done it without Jaden Daniels. So um, he's he's an elite talent. Um, he, he, he looks like he sort of predetermines to run more than you want, but when he does run, you know, he's just one of those guys that could go a long, long ways. Um, and he's very elusive. He's a great runner, but he's also a great thrower. And, uh, you know, you got you to gotta talk to all these guys, though. You know, you just do. There's, there's probably six guys that all could be first-round type players in this draft. Um, you have to talk to them all. Yeah, and Baldy mentioned he's not going to be there at 12. I totally agree with you. And it, the closer we get to the draft, unsurprisingly, quarterbacks just keep going up everyone's board. And now it seems like there might be four quarterbacks taken in the first six picks. So if Sean Payton falls in love with one of these guys, is it smart to trade up and give away future draft capital to go get one of these guys if Sean likes them? Or do you think the Broncos are in a position where they need to build the team around a quarterback first? Well, Sean Payton would even be there in Denver if, you know, back seven years ago, he drafted Patrick Mahomes, Mm. you know, when he was sitting there at 11 before Kansas City went from 24 to 10 to go get him. He'd still be in New Orleans. They probably would have a couple more Super Bowls, too. So he knows he like that. That's never going to go away from Sean Payton. Mm. So he knows if there's a guy that he feels like and that year, there was obviously a lot of other quarterbacks that went Trubisky, all these guys that went. You know, he's he's going to do his very best not to let something like that happen again if he thinks one of these guys is anywhere near what Mahomes is or he feels like I can get what I believe is the best quarterback. Now, I, he can't get Caleb. They can't get to one. And Chicago's not going to trade out of there. But, you know, I don't know. Can you, can you, get, to, can you get to four and get your guy? Can you, can, can you get to Arizona? Can you? Can you talk to, you know, the New England Patriots at this point? I, I mean, I'm not sure, but I think you probably have to get inside the top five to get a guy that he thinks is, you know, something close to, to Mahomes. You know, we talked about the Broncos potentially getting to that fourth round, fourth pick in the draft and how much it would cost them, you know, potentially three first round draft books. And with us not already not having a second this year, do you feel like it's too much to give up? It'll hurt the team in the long term, or do you feel like it's what they need to do as an organization? If, if it's the guy, then it's never too much. If it's the guy, if they get it, whether it's Jaden or Drake or whatever it might be, if it's the guy, it's not too much. Because he's going to make everybody else in that roster better. And while you might not be able to get elite blue chippers for the next couple of years, you can, you can begin building around your quarterback. The money isn't going to be as bad as it is this year in free agency. Um, you know, you just have to be very, very good. Like the Rams' last first-round pick was Jared Goff in 2016. Well, they've been to two Super Bowls since then. And – uh, without first round picks because of, you know, whether it was Jalen Ramsey, guys that they, you know, had coveted, um, they still were able to draft really well in the fifth round, in the third round. You know, they hit on a lot of draft picks. So it just puts the pressure on you to hit on your picks. And that's what it will do to George Payton right now. You know, with the eight picks that they have, you better hit on those guys. You know, the Broncos have the 12th pick, but the Raiders have the 13th pick right behind him. And the Raiders, I guess, address their quarterback issue a little bit with Gardner Minshew, but that's not really a long-term solution. Which team do you think is more likely to jump up and try to draft a quarterback in the top 10? I think the Broncos. Yeah. Because the Broncos, you know, on their roster right now, it's Jared Stidham. I don't know if Ben DiNucci's there. It doesn't matter. Like, they got a guy that's... <laughs> um, you know, that's... You better get yourself a guy and you you know there's the carousel of these quarterbacks like it's just it, it stopped and so uh they better get their guy i think more than what the raiders you know have to do they aiden Hutchinson started a lot of games last year they got gardner Minshew. i don't think they feel nearly as i don't know if desperate's the right word um but i think the broncos are a lot more motivated to get a quarterback early than what the raiders are right now 
Yeah, and the Broncos haven't made any moves at the quarterback position this offseason. They were involved in kind of a, a couple uh, free agents but didn't land any of them. But they did make a couple of moves in free agency going with Brandon Jones at safety and then Malcolm Roach. The awesome thing about you is, Baldy, you break down film more than anyone else. What type of guys are the Broncos getting with those two guys? Well, Malcolm Roach, is, you know, he's a, a, an interior defensive lineman, defense tackle. He's hard to move. Um, he started for the Saints this year. Uh, you know, I mean, Sean, I think just Sean subscribes to, you know, it's the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. Right? <laughs> and so all these guys, little Jordan Humphrey and Malcolm Roach, guys that he knows has been around. Uh, I think that's a big, you know, deal right now for Sean Payton. So go collect some guys, Troutman, get some of these guys. You know, you look at what they're doing at safety right now, signing PJ and go and get, you know, Brandon Jones. Um you know, I think I think that's you know they they're trying to solidify some positions right now with what they have. You know, you lose Josie Jewell, go get Cody Barton. He started games in this league. You're just trying to plug holes right now and just trying to line up with 22. You know, with first week of the season or when whenever minicamp begins, like give me 22 starters right now that we can you know, line up and play with. You know, it, it really seems like the Broncos are going quarterback in the first round, but if they don't. Uh, or, or even if, you know, Bo Nix is the top guy on the board at 12 and they don't trade up, should they be tempted just to go after, like, a Brock Bowers or somebody who seems like they could be a pretty special talent who's on the board still at 12 instead of drafting, maybe reaching for a Bo Nix there? Well, I mean, I think if you if Sean Payton was in this conversation with us right now, he'd say, I don't ever want to pick number 12 again. I never want to be that high in the draft. Mm -hmm. So whatever they do at 12, whether it's quarterback or a tight end like you're spent, there's a lot of great receivers in this draft. There's some excellent edge rushers. Positions of needs for this Broncos team. Like, you you can't miss. You have to hit. Like, because if you miss, the, you know, if you miss, it, the, the, the need never goes away. All you're trying to do is just, you know, find the next guy at, at tight end or edge rusher or quarterback if you miss. And it sets you back. And it puts you, you know, you go to free agency, you overspend to, to – find that position so whatever they do they have to hit big they need an impactful player at quarterback tight end receiver they need an impactful player at that position this year the, the, the talent on this roster right now says they need to upgrade the talent that's what first round picks typically do for them so then speaking of that, my last one for you, Baldy, is uh, put quarterbacks to the side right now. Who is the best non-quarterback in this draft, in your opinion? Well, I think I think Dallas Turner is a great player. Mm. Uh, I think there's some great offensive tackles in this draft. Um, J.C. Latham looks like he could play right tackle in this league for a long, long time. And um, you'd be really set there for a long time. Dallas Turner looks to me like the best uh, pass rusher in this draft. But, you know, lay two. I mean, there's guys there at that position. Um, I love Quinion Mitchell. Uh, but, you know, you could say um, Terry on, you know, Arnold at Alabama. You could, you could stack these corners up pretty good. Wiggins. But I would say if I had to list one guy right now, I'd say – Dallas Turner looks like he's going to be a good player right away in this draft. I love it. I love oh. the inside, Baldy. So pumped to have you back on, and we look forward to getting more insight uh, with you next week. Let's 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 keep talking, guys. We got 29 days to the draft. A lot of things are going to happen in between now and next week. Let's mm -hmm. uh, let's 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 come together and let's break it down. Let's do it. I love it. Thank you so much, Baldy. We'll talk to you soon, man. Baldy with some awesome insight and a little preview into what we're talking about next. Yes. You mentioned J.C. Latham's name, and let's get into our March Madness. But before we do, one of the things I took from that, he thinks Sean's going to trade up and go and get his guy, is what I took from that. He mm -hmm. didn't necessarily say that, but Patrick Mahomes, in a way, not Patrick Mahomes in the division, but missing out on Patrick Mahomes being one spot away from drafting Patrick Mahomes is going to sit with Sean for a long time until he's able to get his guy. And Mahomes obviously has special traits. And, man, we're talking about Jaden Daniels today. So maybe he's just on the top of my head. But special traits, Jaden Daniels has got him. Yeah, he's got, you know, 
everything you would want as a quarterback in the league nowadays. Uh, his ability to run and, you know, the accuracy on the run, I feel like, is amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, a deep threat. I think he's a talented player. Uh, if he's available, I think we should get him. Three firsts, I'm not sure, but <laughs> if he's there, I think we should get him. Yeah, You're saying I'm, four firsts. Ah. <laughs> that is crazy. I mean, first in the country in yards per carry, first in the country in passer rating. And he won the Heisman. Kind of sums it all up right there. And he like, played what in the more SEC. Could you want? Yeah. He, he wasn't playing at Montana. The most overrated conference in the country. Yeah. <laughs> the SEC. No, they just have Bama. Uh, Georgia. Yeah, they, they always have, like, the top team. And because of that, it just kind of staggers. And the Heisman winner. Yeah. Yeah, no, they have the Heisman yeah. winner. They've had Heisman winners. Guess who had the Heisman winner the year before? So they have the best player in the NFL. They have the best coaches in the NFL. They have, I guess. Texas Tech. Who's the best player in the NFL? Oh, I'm sorry. They have the best player in college. Oh, okay. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, Yeah, Texas Tech, not in the SEC yet. Yeah, Yeah, Um, I wasn't going to say that. No, you're you're right. Um, I guess they didn't have the best team, though, last year. That was Michigan. That was Harbaugh. And Harbaugh looks very smart now with... Because of the glasses? It? What was it? Yeah, exactly. Khakis? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What was it? Two he months? got old. He did get old. Yeah. <laughs> the NFL will do that, different. won't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what was it? Two months ago, he said that J.J. McCarthy is the best quarterback in the draft, and the teams will realize that once they get to spend time with him. Yep. Now, he's getting buzzed as the number two pick in the draft. Now, so he's probably not going to look right as truly the number one quarterback, because uh-huh. that's going to be Caleb Williams. But uh, Harbaugh... Looking kind of spot on with J.J. McCarthy's rise. And if you want to watch any sports, you got to check out our friends over at Fubo TV, Nuggets, Abs, Rockies. Our friends at Fubo TV have it with over 140 live channels of sports, shows, movies, and news. You can stream live from any device. So when I was in Florida, I just pulled up Fubo TV on my phone and was able to watch like I was at home on my TV. So scan the QR code on the screen now or go to FuboTV.com slash DNVR where they're going to give you a 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. So whether it's NFL, whether it's uh, NBA, college football, whatever it is you want to watch it, check out our friends over at FuboTV.com slash DNVR. And shout out to the American Raptors, Colorado's only professional rugby team. And they're back. And you can catch their games on ESPN+. Plus. You don't want to miss it. A lot of uh, hard-hitting action. And as we're seeing now, we talked about it yesterday, you know, the NFL is going after some of these rugby players. So I don't think it'll be long before a couple of American Raptors mm-hmm. are in the NFL. Michael Bandy. Yeah. He was an American How Raptor. about it? Yeah. Like there a star, go. right? A immediate captain. Uh, as like a 22-year-old. It's pretty good. Yeah. I'm not, I wasn't foreshadowing there, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I like my That's So Raven moment. But yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what's wow. even better is our guy, Colton Strickler, uh, has it all covered for you. Weekly DMVR Rugby Podcast. Hit that subscribe button. Um, the Red Hot American Raptors remain undefeated at home in 2024 after their stunning comeback against second place, you care. Not you here, but you care. Uh, the Raptors will look to extend their win streak to three games when they return to action at Affinity Park on Sunday, April 4th, April 7th against uh, Stelkenham. These are all new teams for me, so you got to rock with me. Uh, kickoff is at 3 p.m. Tickets are only $10, and kids 12 and under are free. You don't want to miss out. Go check them out um, at a Infinity Park. You hear what you got for me? You know what that's a raven is? Oh, come on. Give me a break. I've heard of it. Yes. You, what did you watch as a kid? You didn't watch Disney Channel? I watched sports. You didn't even know Cartoon Network, <laughs> I Invader knew, Zim? Or? Um, I knew SpongeBob. What you talking about? I knew SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> I knew SpongeBob. That's an old man. I we, knew SpongeBob. Uh, <laughs> me and that dude used to chill down at the at Fans Man, me uh, and SpongeBob. So you didn't watch it. any like kid, you know what I'm saying, TV? Um, any cartoons? Rocket Power? Rocket Power yeah, a little bit. Cat dog. Um, you just meant to be a reporter. Dog. You know, I was told uh, I look like Jimmy Neutron with mm-hmm. the way my wow. hair was back in the day. Wow. So uh, I know who Jimmy Neutron is. Um, Wait, what do you mean you know me. who he is? <laughs> like you didn't watch Jimmy Neutron? Um, Everybody watched Jimmy Neutron. Maybe a tiny bit, but a like bit. I couldn't tell you anyone's name in that show what did outside you do? of Jimmy Neutron. What? Sports. Literally sports. <laughs> That's crazy. I love like, but I, like you what? get home from school at three o'clock, there's no sports on. Oh, there's uh there's uh yeah, there's shows on ESPN. Okay, okay. They just take you into sports. So no Saturday morning with a bowl of cereal and just... And sports, yeah. 
No, all that. Or like, <laughs> no. Oh, None of that. This is crazy. Like Ooh, that. We did. Uh, I watched Chuck last night with Lexi. Did you? She'd never seen it First before. First episode? Yeah, she fell asleep. Oh. <laughs> wow. I know. Yeah, there was a lot of what Wait, just you happened. Didn't fall I was asleep? Like, oh. No, I love that show. Yeah. I just thought, I mean, <laughs> I knew it was going to be tough because like it, it was made in 2007. Yeah. And that now looks very different. Like it when does. there's a fiery explosion, it's like, okay, fiery <laughs> explosion. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I don't think we're watching episode two, but I'm going to do my best. You know what? It's because you went to a sporting event first. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was a sad one. <laughs> yeah, it was. What'd you say? Minus 415? Yeah. No, they were heavy, heavy favorites. Oh, that is a bummer. So yeah. maybe they'll bounce back tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe as a dog. Potentially. We'll see. We'll, we'll follow. Over. I know if they would have won last night, tomorrow would have been for first place in the NHL. Damn. But they blew it. Damn. Against a terrible, terrible team. And they'd won nine in a row before that. Damn. Yeah. So that, that I'm, yeah. I'm I hope upset. we're talking about the Broncos like this soon. Like, man, they just yeah. lost to the Detroit Lions and if they would have beat them, they would have been first in the NFL. Yeah. Now they have to settle for second, and now they're nine and one in their past ten. Oh, games. they would have been going to the Super Bowl, but Josh Reynolds dropped those third <laughs> down passes. Dang. <laughs> um, uh. The first reaction from Baldy on Josh Reynolds, the exact same as you, Henry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that that's drop. what he did. That's like of all the notable things in his career, those drops way up here. Everything else, which is being like a really solid football player down here. Gosh, what's it's crazy? It's just tough, and it's, it's like the opposite of Von Miller. It's like you you go talk to like you go to some random old lady in Ohio and just be like, hey, what's up with Von Miller? She's like, oh, the sacks in that Super Bowl. Like uh -huh. that's they it's the opposite of that. Where it's like you just made the mistakes in those moments, which it's just tough to get around. Well what's, it's just what he what he's done lately. You know what I'm saying? As true. soon as he comes next when he comes in next year, if he has like a hundred yard game, yep. you know, 12, if he has 12 catches, I think you know, you'll forget all that stuff quickly. It was just the last thing on tape was those drops. In the, you know what I'm saying? It's in the tough. Playoff, so. Well, unfortunately, tough. Henry, if uh, Josh Reynolds doesn't have any 100-yard games, he fits right in with this Broncos receiving room. Do none of them have a 100-yard game? One. 100-yard receiving game last year. Oh, last Marvin year. Okay. Mims. Marvin Mims. Yeah, yeah it, Cortland does in, in the past, but that is insane. Uh, he has 96. He has 96, 94, 92. Wait, was that last year or his entire career? Uh... 2022, he had 96 and 92. 2020 had 94. Can we? I mean, can we please bring someone in that has a hundred yard receiving game. Those guys are expensive. I wonder <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's a good point. I wonder how many Cortland has. That is. I wonder how many I mean, Cortland just, has. Since hundreds a lot. His Pro Bowl year. Um, or ever. Are you pulling it up right now? Yeah, it's just a little slow because there's a lot of loading with all. He's played a lot of games. Yeah. Oh yes. And halfway. Ah, yes. Okay. Now just sort by yards. <laughs> so he had we were there. he had 159 against the Jags in 2021. Yeah. He had 122 against Houston in 2022. He had 120 against the Raiders in 2019. 120 against the Steelers in 2021, and 113 against the Vikings in 2019. I bet you those were all with diff different quarterbacks. Ooh, uh, probably. Point. Yeah, it's <laughs> a great <laughs> point. You mentioned a couple in 2021, and I think two in 2022. 2019, yes. two. 2019, two in 2019, two in 2021, two in 2022. So maybe no, one he, in 2022. I was, gonna say, I was counting. 2022 would be the time that he would have the same quarterback, but he only had one that year. So you're probably right, Todd. It's crazy. That is wild. That is wild. Maybe he'll rack up a couple this year with uh, Jaden Daniels. As a starting quarterback. And Might if you going 200. Oh, there we go. I absolutely love it. And I love March Madness, not just with college basketball, but with our brackets. And, of course, we are almost done with the first round. I think we've got two more matchups left in the first round. But want to update you on what happened yesterday with our brackets. You guys broke down some cornerbacks yesterday. Terry and Arnold and Quinion Mitchell, who guys both both guys that Baldy likes, and Terry and Arnold dominated with 72% of the vote. So he moves on. Alabama player stays in this. And speaking of Alabama, in our next matchup, who do we have here? Yeah, here. We've got, oh, Fuaga and J.C. Latham. Fuaga, Oregon State 
offensive tackle, and then J.C. Latham, Ala, or not or, uh, Oregon State, if yeah. I said Florida State, um, and then Alabama tackle J.C. Latham. So we got a little tackle on tackle, or is it guard on guard battle going on here? Um, J.C. Latham is definitely a tackle. Um, that one you're confident about. Fuaga is the one who could be moving inside to guard. Um, Latham just has like the best parts of every thing that you could want you know he's like he's what six six three forty two right <laughs> yeah so like he's built like a massive guard but plenty mobile enough to play tackle with fuaga he's also he's like six six three twenty or something like that um so like big dude of course just not quite as big and probably a little more likely to move inside to guard just because of the just not feet maybe not so quick like maybe has a little bit tougher time staying in front of edge rushers both of them i think probably stick at tackle um but to me latham is latham's a guy who you're saying like this could be just an all pro freak like larry allen guy um with fuaga you're saying like hey we just got our right tackle for a long time and that's that's a great guy to have yeah, I'm right there with you. I think this is a, a very obvious one here yeah. um, because I do think it's Latham. I agree with you. I think he is a tackle. Um, some people say he's like almost an immediate Pro Bowl guard if a team decides to move him mm -hmm. inside. But if you have the chance to get um, like a 10-year starting tackle, you do that in a heartbeat. And there's also a lot of people that believe that he is the best tackle in this class. And that's impressive because this is a really good tackle class. Joe Alt, uh, I mean, there's like five guys that could go in the top 15 here and none of them would be reaches but i think jc latham is right at the top maybe you think he's number two beside behind alt maybe you think his upside is is more than joe alt so uh to me this is an easy little upset the number 10 seed i think you go jc latham here uh todd what are your thoughts uh you know i'm not gonna go against uh the grain with this one <laughs> i think he's uh i think you can't go wrong yeah it's two tackles two top tier tackles and as you know in the nfl they're definitely needed um Usually get paid well because they're because they're great players. So I don't think you could go wrong with either one of those guys. So I'll go with the majority here. When it comes to the Broncos, though, we had to we have to pick a winner for this round. I just don't know if tackle makes a whole lot of sense unless no, for some reason the Broncos decide to move on from Garrett Bowles, and it just wouldn't make sense to do that now. You probably would have done that when you moved on from Justin Simmons. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't make sense to draft a guy at 12. It would make sense to draft a guy in the third round or the fourth round or the fifth round and have him develop a year behind Garrett Bowles. This is Garrett's last year of his contract, so he could move on after this season. But you would get a developmental guy later in the draft, not at 12. So yeah. I'd be surprised if Latham makes it out of this next round, depending on who he's going up against. But right now, um, there we go. Yep. J.C. Latham. In case the Broncos do decide to move on from Garrett Bowles, we did break down J.C. Latham a little bit for you. And I did uh, pull up the 100-yard games from court. Brandon Allen was a quarterback for one of them. Okay. Pretty impressive. Uh, Joe yes. Flacco was a quarterback for one of them. Russell Wilson was a quarterback for one of them. Teddy Bridgewater for two of them. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. with the two piece that yeah. is <laughs> two gloves two not the stat. <laughs> that's not the stat you wanted to hear when the broncos traded for russell wilson uh -huh. like let me tell you this teddy bridgewater is going to have more 100 yard passing games to Cortland than russell wilson will teddy you P. knew something was teddy going B. wrong that's actually wild just because of how many incredible plays Cortland made for russ yep mm-hmm and it was only 100 yard game when you put it all together and they probably played together longer yeah oh for sure two years yeah yeah man uh, yeah that's depressing what's not depressing is our comment section let's hop in and talk to the people and when we do that hit us with a thumbs up we really appreciate it. we got a ton of people watching today and not nearly enough thumbs up a lot of people you pumped we had baldy on a lot of people you pumped that the broncos signed josh Rounds so the thumbs up to show us the support mm -hmm. and our first question coming in from opti op who says i wish the broncos would take the advantage of compensatory draft picks take chances on a bunch of youngish players on one-year deals who they project will earn more next off season follow the rams in 49ers model yeah, I mean, it's you just have to have good players leaving your team to get compensatory picks. And the way it cancels out is it's like the top 750 players, and they figure that out by a combination of how much you play and how much you get paid. And then, like, Pro Bowl, All Pro, that sort of stuff. Um, but it's how many top 750 players you lose and how many top 750 you bring in. And the Broncos just aren't losing players. Like, they lost Lloyd and they lost Josie this year, which are 
two that would qualify, you would think. Um, but when you bring in, I mean, I guess you could just not bring in Brandon Jones and not bring in. Um, I, I wonder if Cody Barton is going to count. Uh, I wonder if uh, Malcolm Roach is going to count. I wonder if uh, today Josh Reynolds is going to count. Like you, you got to be losing a lot of guys or have so many guys in on the inside that you don't need to replace. Like to, to bring in young guys who aren't in that top 750. I haven't looked at the cutoff, but I think it's going to be around like getting paid like two, three million bucks. You're, they're just not in the in, in the position. Like you just need more talent on the team. You need to be overflowing with talent to be able to be getting that compensatory picks for them. I think this is maybe one of the first years the Broncos are going to get compensatory picks in a while because of losing Josie uh, and Lloyd to big deals. But they but they brought in these guys. Yeah, I don't think Jerry. it's going to add maybe up Jerry as will. much. That's a trade. Yeah, when you uh, trade, it has someone. to be expired contract, and it can't be someone that you cut. Yeah, so. Justin doesn't count, unfortunately. Really, the, the thing Too with much. compensatory draft picks is you just have to have, um, you, you have to have talent. And the Broncos haven't had talent because they haven't had draft picks, and then they haven't hit the draft picks that they have had. And uh, so they can't let any of their talent leave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then so if you're not letting any of your talent leave, you're not going to get those compensatory draft picks. So really, the yeah. Broncos just need to be better, a lot better at drafting and developing their guys. And then that's how it turns into what the 49ers have because Broncos going on a couple of years without compensatory picks. That is not good. Um, and, and yeah, right now over the cap has it has the cutoff at right about 3 million bucks. So they have Cody Barton, not counting. Um, but they have Lloyd and Josie being canceled out by Malcolm Jones and, or Malcolm Roach and Brandon Jones. So Dang. they're stuck. Dang, stuck again. Yep. Um, and then last comment coming in from uh, Edward Wright, I believe. He says, uh, this one's for Hank, I think. What's the difference between Cortland's drops and Josh Reynolds' drops? They're still drops. Well, yeah, I mean, they, I mean, every drop is a drop. I mean, I haven't gone back through the film of every drop that either of them made. All I know is <laughs> those are two massive <laughs> drops that were the reason a team didn't go to the Super Bowl. Um, I can look up. I think I have it right here. So they have, uh, this is pro football focuses numbers. Uh, oh, so they have five drops last season, including those two in the last game for, uh, Reynolds Broncos. They have, um, seven for court, four for Javante, four for Jerry, two for Brandon Johnson, one for little Jordan Humphrey. And Josh was five last year. Yeah. Including two at the end. So like I, and that's why uh, the drops aren't like something mathematically. Okay, they're huge. Yeah. It, it, is it like, a big game thing? Is it like a third down thing? I don't know, but those two were huge. Didn't, and not to downplay those, but didn't like St. Brown even have a massive drop in that game? I think like, he did too. It was like there were a lot of drops. Everyone was yeah. letting Jarrett Goff down Absolutely. in that game. It was, it, I, Jameson Williams, I think, had one mm-hmm. too. Like it was wild how the, the Lions really dropped the game, yep. dropped an opportunity at the Super Bowl. And then the other kind of interesting set that PFF has is passer rating when targeted. Um, and I'm curious to go through because they also chart like where on the field you're catching your passes and I'll go through all that stuff. But so this year, 117 pass rating when targeted for uh, uh, Reynolds, uh, 104.7 the year before. Those are his two years over 100. Then just for reference, the Broncos... Uh, best was Brandon Johnson, 140.5. Oof. Then Lil Jordan, 129.6. Then Court, 124.5. Then Mims at 105. Julio, 103. Samaje, 102. Javante, 96. Um, you can imagine the other guys down below. Oh, Jerry. Jerry's notable. 86. So, should be should be a nice addition. See you, Jerry. That's <laughs> maybe a, one of the reasons they yeah. let him go. And we're going to see you tomorrow on the DNVR Broncos podcast. We'll continue to break down these moves, break down where the Broncos brass is. We'll be visiting Drake May later this week, so we'll talk about that. See if it means anything. See if it means more or less. But thank you all so much for tuning in. Hit us with a thumbs up on your way out. We really appreciate it. We look forward to talking to you tomorrow. <laughs> City like the mayor.